Star on NBC, maybe Hyperdrive on Netflix, or Top Gear on History Channel. I might have been driving a jalopy or doing 186 miles an hour in a Lamborghini, but I've had so much fun here this week to get to see these operators and these machines up close. There's a show here, I gotta figure it out, but if you're like me, one of your favorite shows had to have been Dirty Jobs with the legendary Micro. And if it's not that that you know him from, maybe Micro works in the way that he gives back. But right now, Mike is here. He is ready to put on a game show for us called Titan of the Trades. Mike, take it away, buddy. Rutledge, thank you so much for that never ambiguous and always thrilling introduction. It's true, this is another episode of Titan of the Trades. I'm Mike Rowe. I'll be impersonating a host for the next half hour here on Friday the 13th at Con Expo. What could possibly go wrong? In my hand, a series of questions I'm going to uh, pose to the contestants to my right. We'll meet them momentarily. First, again, a quick hello to Lonnie and Jason. How are you guys? Doing well, Mike. How are you doing? Happy Friday. Fantastic. Happy Friday to you. Lonnie and Jason are what you call experts. Inside, they're enormous craniums or enormous brains, and they're here to shed some light on the topics that I'm about to delve into. To my right are two of the guys who have been nominated for this year's Contractor of the Year. Uh, every year for the last couple decades, Equipment World uh, has been selecting the Contractor of the Year. Caterpillar always sponsors it, and uh, these two guys are here to show us just how large their brains are. We've got, uh, who do we have here? we got Ben K, and we've got uh, Scott R. Ben K, what's the K stand for? It stands for Kowalski, Mike. It says what? Kowalski. Kowalski. Well, it's nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Tell me about your business real quick and what you did to uh, qualify you for Contractor of the Year status. Oh, yeah. Uh, Goodmanson Construction's the business. We run out of Roseville, uh, Minnesota. We're concrete, asphalt, and excavation. And uh, we heard about this contest. We entered ourselves, and here we are. What a world, right? Yeah. Well, welcome to Vegas. I hope you're having a good time. Scott R., what's the R stand for? Roberts. Where are you from? Provo, Utah. How are things in Utah? Utah is good. Good, good. I've been to Provo a couple times. I never had a bad time in Provo. I had a weird time. <laughs> it's different, but yeah. good. Yeah, good. What do, you, uh, what do you do exactly? I am a fourth generation contractor, uh, part of a family business that started in 1912, and we do concrete excavation, commercial construction. You love it? I love it. Four generations. That's amazing. That it, it's incredible, isn't it? How many people in this line of work come through it generationally. It's a lot like farming when you think about it. Yeah, it is. It's incredible and I'm happy to be a part of it. Fantastic. Well, this is a really simple game. I'm going to ask each of you two multiple choice questions. Uh, take all the time you need. Just bear in mind, we're only up here for 15 minutes. You give the answer. If you're right, uh, you'll get a point. Whoever gets the most points is going to get a fabulous prize. If during the course of the questioning you feel like you need a lifeline, feel free to ask Lonnie or Jason for some assistance. They'll eliminate one of the potential answers, thereby dramatically increasing your odds of not embarrassing yourself. Are you ready? Ready. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do this. Ben, we start with you. Question number one. Advanced technologies such as hybrids, electric drive, and continuously variable transmissions can reduce fuel consumption by as much as A, 5%, B, double digits, C, a skosh, or D, a tad. You don't know how badly the Minnesotan in me wants it to be C. You want to say skosh, I want you? it to be that, but yeah. I know I'm, I'm pretty certain it's not. Uh, I'm going to say it's A, 5%. A, 5%. And you don't want to consult an expert to eliminate any of your possibilities. No pressure. I, I'm going to save that one. You're going to save Just it? Give me my ace in the hole. <laughs> All righty. Ben is saving an ace in the hole. He believes that 5% is the correct answer. Is Ben correct? No, he's not. And you can tell, Ben, by that deeply humiliating <laughs> universal sound of disappointment. It's the buzzer. See, you yeah. could have asked for help, Ben, but you didn't. Oh, I, I'm saving this one. I, I hope uh, the next one's not super easy. Yeah, don't worry. I'm gonna it's hate not. Um, why was he wrong, Lonnie, aside from the obvious reasons? I mean, are, are people surprised by the fact that you can save double digits? Yeah, double digits is the uh, definitely the savings that our customers are recognizing. Take, for example, the D6XE we've seen out here all week. Um, it's up to 35%. Uh, reduced fuel consumption, not to mention all the next generation excavators out there. So really driving down operating costs these days for our contractors. You know, in Ben's defense, Jason, when you say double digits, you really 
casting a pretty wide net. I mean, it could have been 99% for all we know and still qualified as a double-digit correct response. So I'm, I'm, I didn't write the questions. I'm just saying that there's a fair amount of ambiguity in this. Would you agree? Well, I think Lonnie wrote that question, to be honest. So we'll just let that one slide. <laughs> but it also depends on where you start with, with the efficiency of your operation in your machines. That's kind of why it is a double-digit. Um, it is significant. So if you look at individual machine to individual machine, you know, it will be double digits. If you look across the fleet, it'll be higher double digits. Again, if you look at your application of where you're starting, increase in putting these type of machines with the hybrid technology, electric, CVTs, again, it just keeps going up and up, and that's why the range is so large. Got it. Cool. All right, Scott, you have a chance to leap into a commanding lead right now with the correct answer. Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't want to make you nervous, but I probably should have pointed out you're playing for a fabulous prize. It's a gift card from Caterpillar with $300 on it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and understand exactly what there is to lose, shall we? All right. All right, good. Here you go. Tell me something. As a metric, fuel efficiency includes both fuel burn and what? Is it A, material moved, B, operator fatigue, C, price per gallon, or D, calories burned my wife would like it to be d but i'm gonna go with a you're gonna go with a yeah but your wife would prefer d she would is she here she is what's her name tony is she watching right now she should be yeah i doubt it though there's a lot going on in <laughs> vegas you never know where tony's going to wander off to in the middle of the day and, and here i am and there there scott is he's going with tell me again a he's going with a is scott correct <laughs> Uh, he's correct, and he's up one to nothing. Ben, this has got to be deeply humiliating for you. Tell me something, Lonnie. Uh, why is he correct? He's correct, Mike, because fuel efficiency is a comparison of how much we're getting done, so production over the unit of fuel burned. It is not a true measure to just look at fuel consumption because we really need to understand how much we're getting done with each unit of fuel and driving the fuel efficiency as we compare products across the lineup that's available to our contractors. Jason, is there is there any efficacy at all in calories burned? I mean, Tony would like it to be that, Scott's <laughs> wife, but is she just is she just out there hoping? Well, not to create any marital issues or anything, so I'll go a little bit softly on this one. If you look at just <laughs> calories burned, um, or you look at just fuel consumption, it could increase the calories burned without looking at a fuel efficiency from, from the stress level, but, okay, and I'll sure. just leave it at that. Uh, so oh, in other I words, like that. so Tony, there's hope. All right, Ben, we're coming back to you right now. This is the beginning of round two. Two more questions. The stakes couldn't be higher. Which of the following is true? Economy mode, A, lowers gas prices for the economy, B, uses a torque converter to save fuel, C, limits your engine in tough conditions, or D, reduces fuel burn when work allows. Uh, I'm going to actually ask an expert on this one. I don't blame you. What, <laughs> oh, what, I, don't, I don't, yeah. Which expert? <sighs> it's a tough one. <laughs> This shouldn't uh, be that hard. Let me go. I'm going to go with Lonnie on this Lonnie? one. Lonnie? Okay. So what I'll do is eliminate one incorrect answer for you, all right? I can tell you that B, uses a torque converter to save fuel, is incorrect. So you know that B isn't an option. That means A, C, or D. Lowers gas prices for the economy, limits your engine in tough conditions, or reduces fuel burn when work allows. Ben, your answer is? D. He's going with D. Is Ben correct? Yeah, he is. Very nice. Very nice. So he's still in the game. He is still in the game. Um, whenever work allows, Lonnie, why is that an important turn of phrase? Yeah, so there are different fuel settings, like in the next and excavators, that are available. The economy mode does maximize the efficiency of the engine with the inputs the operator is putting into the hydraulic system, making sure that it's, not, it's burning the least amount of fuel without shorting the operator on the power to the work tool that it's implementing. Got it. Jason, you concur? I concur. The original eco modes were kind of a flat D rate. Now they're more of adaptive economy mode. So you're either in power mode or in economy mode, depending on what part of the cycle or what part of the application that you need. So the machine's smarter than what the operator is and will automatically select what's the best mode of operation to save the most fuel. Scott, you ever feel like your machine's smarter than you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Tony, have any thoughts on this, I wonder? <laughs> She, yeah, she does. All right, look, this is your opportunity. You can put it away right here with a correct answer. If you miss it, we're going to have to go to a tiebreaker and, you know, 
Nobody wants to see that happen, but it's really all up to you, depending on your response to this question. Which of the following is false about the intelligent compaction system cat machine drive power? A, everything depends on operator intuition. B, work gets done faster with less fuel. C, problem areas are more easily addressed. D, it makes operators happy. Well, I'm going to have to go with A again on that one. It worked out for you last time, didn't it? Yeah, so we stick with it. We don't, Why not? We don't get confused here. Just say. <laughs> All right, Scott's keeping it simple. He's going with A of the following. One is false about the intelligent compaction system. He says it's A. Is he correct? <laughs> he's correct. And he's the winner. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'll come back in a second to gush you over you. Stand by. Uh, Lonnie, this is... Uh, I think we're basically saying the system really has nothing to do with the operator. Exactly right, Mike. So machine drive power is a Caterpillar exclusive intelligent compaction system that measures the stiffness of the soil or the stiffness of the material that you are placing and trying to compact. It maximizes efficiency, the ultimate in uh, making sure that you are reaching those compaction targets. You add mapping to it. Now you understand exactly where you have coverage and where you don't. Again, optimizing pass is reducing rework and allowing you to go on to the next pass comfortably and confidently. Should I be concerned, Jason, at any point that the intelligence of these machines is so dramatically going to eclipse that of the operator that we're going to approach some level of singularity like we saw in Transformers? Well, I think as technology improves, again, our intent of a lot of the technologies like the assist technologies, machine drive power, is just to take some away, uh, some of the redundancy from the operator let him or her focus on the job and some of the redundancy that we can make easier and assist for them or automate for them just makes their job easier. All right. Now that we're officially done, let's gush over Scott. Shall we? You're the big winner. You got a Caterpillar shop card with $300 worth of stuff on it. Ben, my heart breaks for you, but nobody goes home empty handed here. You're going to get the same card with $100 on there. Spend it at your leisure. All right. Congra and look, seriously, congratulations on being here and for being nominated for contract of the year it's a really really big deal and i'd love to talk to you more but there's another couple guys coming up here so this is this is probably goodbye well we'll let them have their moment in the spotlight but we appreciate caterpillar and equipment world for having us here terrific and i appreciate tony for being such a <laughs> probably the best member of our audience today so far although they're all terrific ben thanks again for coming Thank by you too. All right, you can leave the microphones on the uh, seat as we welcome two new contestants. These are also contractors of the year, nominated that is, and we've got, uh, oh, hold on, I'll find your names. Hold on, hold on. I'll ask you if I have to, but uh, tiebreaker, let me get past this. Got a lot of cards here, a lot of cards. We've got Matt Mitchell and we got Rick Davis. That's Rick Davis. I could have just looked at your name tag and figured it out. There it is. That's why I was told to wear that. Did they tell you to wear it? I get told to do a lot of things, yes, sir. Did they tell you to wear one, yes, Rick sir. Davis? Yes, sir, sure did. You just ignored it, though. No, I got one right here. You got one? Oh, all right, fantastic. Uh, Matt, where are you from? What do you do? What? Uh, sorry, Rick, start with you. You're going to be number one. Okay. Where'd you come from? I'm from uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. I uh, love Grand Junction. Yeah, it's a beautiful part of Colorado. It's absolutely. gorgeous. Yeah. What's, your, uh, what's your business called? It's called Mountain Valley Contracting. Uh, started it uh, back in 1996. But my background, I grew up around construction. My dad had a construction company, and so I just, I just learned it by being around it, osmosis. Your whole life? My whole life, yes. How, how many people you employ? Uh, we fluctuate between 20 and uh, 40, depending on the season and where we're at. How many could you hire right now if qualified people showed up ready to work? For this season, what it's looking like, we'll probably be looking for probably 8 to 10 uh, here in the next few months. It's a sizable chunk on a yeah. percentage basis of your workforce. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> where are you hail from, Rick? I mean, Matt. <laughs> I got it all backwards, man. Matt, Mitch, yeah. you. I, I'm from Snaith Ferry, North Carolina. Yep. Um, started my business in 1994. Uh, just woke up one day and decided I was going to be in the construction business. So I went into it full force. Um, we do underground utilities and we do heavy earth moving and build uh, roads. You woke up one day in 1994 and just decided you were going to get into construction. Yes, sir. What? 
how does that work? What, what were you doing before that? Well, before, <laughs> before that, I was fishing. <laughs> All right. One day you're fishing. Next yep. day you're working construction. <laughs> and you're nominated for Contractor of the Year. So congratulations yes, on sir. that. Thank you. All right. I got all my cards backwards, so apologies in advance. When I say Matt, I merely mean Rick. When I say Rick, I mean Matt, but we'll sort it out. We're going to start with you, Rick. All right? You just watch this play. You know how it works, right? I think I do. We'll all right. See. So, yeah, it's real simple. It's multiple choice. If you want to eliminate one of the answers, just ask for help, and they'll be happy to do it. Otherwise, give me your best choice, and the game shall begin. You ready? Give her a shout. Let's go. Here it goes. Telematics are machine monitoring systems and displays providing real-time information such as location, productivity, idle time, and what? A, job site revenue, B, fuel efficiency, C, operator scores, D, baseball scores. Boy, that could be a tough one there, Mike. Um, I would like to see A, that would be beneficial to me as an owner, but I believe it's probably gonna be B fuel efficiency. Rick would love to say A, but he's going to go with B because he's got many years of experience. The question is, is he correct? Of course he's correct. Fuel efficiency, uh, Lonnie, I dare say, is, uh, is an emerging theme here on Titan of the Trades. We've heard a lot about this morning, Mike. Yes, fuel efficiency, you know, fuel's that necessary evil. You've got to continue to feed that tank, and we're trying to drive down how much it's needing. But I just want to say with telematics, it is a true digital visualization for our contractors to see their fleet, where their machines are located, uh, the diff what their fuel burn is at, um, how much fuel is left in the tank. They can order those parts and service, and we're bringing more and more lightweight tools for them to see that. And uh, so it's... It's great. Telematics is uh, more visualizing today than the contractors have ever had before. What's the next level? Is it evolving constantly, Jason? Like, what can we expect in yeah. the future with telematics? Telematics is evolving all the time. A lot of our customers are giving us feedback all the time of they want additional information, they want to see things faster. Again, everybody's got data overload today, and that's not what we're after. Um, we're not in the business of providing data. We want to provide information so the customers can act upon it. And to his point, if you use telematics, you know, our view and a lot of the view of customers is it doesn't impact job site revenue. Because you know how much money you're making, you know how much fuel you're burning, you know how much material you're making, so you can start making some revenue estimations off your job simply using telematics. Speaking of data overload, here's another question. This one was going to you, Matt. You ready? Ready. Here it comes. What best describes a GC model? What best describes it? Is it A, simple? B, less efficient, C, lacks performance, or D, it's just a cool new name? Um, it's a 15-minute show. Yep, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I won't say it's the, uh, the C, the lack of performance. You're going to go with C. Yep. Now, you know you can ask any of these guys for a lifeline if you want. It's no pressure. Gotcha. All right. You're saying... What best describes a GC model is lax performance. All right, is he correct? No, I think they were. I think they were looking for the simplicity of it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, as a rule, Lonnie, uh, none of your machines are really designed with the intention of lacking performance, as best I can tell. You're exactly right, Mike. So with the GC, the traditional models, as well as the XC models. We brought you more choices now than ever before. So there's a the right tool for the right job, matching the machine to the mission. GC is not does not stand for anything. It stands for GNC. A GC is simple to operate and simple to maintain for those light to medium duty applications or for loader utilization when you're looking for the least amount of uh, cost per hour. We've had this conversation before, Jason, but I, I just have to ask again. Why doesn't it stand for anything? Why can't GC stand for... A general contractor, for instance. I mean, since we got two of them sitting right here, surely, surely it could stand for something. It could stand for something. A lot of people make up what the acronym may, uh, means, general contractor. But again, it's, it's just a designator in our product line because we had a lot of customers ask us to get back to the basics. We put a lot of technologies in machines, which is great for some applications and some customers. Others just simply wanted a machine that was basic. The operator could get in. He could be trained in a half hour and be productive the next half hour. And that's 
That's what the GC products are, are about. Go Caterpillar. Whatever you'd like it to be in your head, Mike, we're good with. <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, the score is one to nothing. Rick has jumped into the lead, and we're coming back to Rick right now with the second question. Which of the following, Rick, which of the following has a significant impact on digging performance, stability, cycle times, and fuel efficiency? Is it A, emissions, B, horsepower, C, bucket, and bucket edge selection, or D, control levers? I think just based on experience, I think I know which one it is, but I'd like to have an expert here maybe eliminate one. I don't blame you. Which one do you want? Uh, let's go with Lonnie. Lonnie? Okay, I'll eliminate one of the wrong answers so your Vegas odds improve. How about that? I can share with you that B, horsepower, is not the correct answer. That simply limits it to uh, emissions, bucket and bucket edge selection or control levers. Where's, oh, there they are. Which bikes? I'm going to go with uh, C, bucket and bucket edge selection. C is his answer. Is he correct? Yes, he is. Bucket and bucket edge selection. Lonnie, I didn't realize it, but I mean, I, do you first select the bucket and then the edge for your bucket? Yeah, so in Caterpillar lingo, it's called GET, ground engaging tools. We have a plethora of experts, Mike, that that's all they do is look in the ground engaging tools for development and application. So it depends on what material you're trying to dig. And you want to, again, match the right GET to your application so you can be most fuel efficient and most productive for penetrating that material and getting that bucket to the bucket fill factor of at least 100%. So, Jason, if I understood Lonnie correctly, GET stands for something, but GC doesn't. Explain. GET stands for ground engaging tools. GC stands for simple, durable, and a fully featured oh. cat product. No, I'm not buying it. I, I, I somehow... Before I leave. Absolutely. All right, good. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see how you can win this game. Right now, it's, you got one question left, and you're down, you're down two to nothing. Right. So basically, we're just playing for. Uh, That's called GP, not GC. GP? Yeah. What's that? It's general purpose. General purpose. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, typically, a situation like this, Matt, I take care of the jokes, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the best fake game show in the history of Con Expo. I think we could actually take this on the air someplace, get away with it. When are we going? Tomorrow. I'm there. <laughs> Good. All right. Rich, what conditions are most suited for a compact radius excavator? A compact radius excavator. Which conditions are most suited for it? A, your compacting materials. B, you're driving it on a road. C, you're late to work. D, you're working in tight spaces. It's absolutely D, the tight places. You say that <laughs> like a man who's been in some tight spaces himself once upon a time. I've been in some tight places. You ever been in an opal mine shaft? Never. I was in an opal mine shaft in Cooper Pedy, Australia, years ago on Dirty Jobs. I think it's 60 feet deep, about the size of a manhole cover. They lower you down there on a postage chair looking for little trace elements of soapstone and sandstone and trying to find the opals. So you like picture a little G.I. Joe action figure in the bottom of a Coke bottle, looking up at that tiny dot of blue. The tightest spade I've... I, don't do it, folks. Don't, don't go in an opal mine shaft. What are we doing? This is D. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm just killing time, man. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> you can cut the tension with a knife up here. Yeah. The stakes couldn't be lower. The answer couldn't be more declarative. And yet I sit here as a fake host telling stories that nobody really wants to hear. You got to wonder what's going through my mind in a situation like this. Here it is. Is Matt correct? Yes, he's correct. Let's give it up for Matt, man. He didn't get skunked, and that's great news. Hey, tight spaces, you know, we see these big machines and we always picture them in our mind's eye on a mountainside or out in the middle of some, you know, epic rolling hill. But many, many times you guys are in super tight spots. 
One of the greatest concerns, Mike, with any hydraulic excavator is where that where is the counterweight swinging? So on those compact radius machines, like the next generation 315, 325, they're swinging within their own track pattern. So it really, really drives safety and a lot of efficiency, and they still have an impeccable lifting capacity. Swinging within your own track pattern, Jason, seems like just advice to live by, both me metaphorically and, and specifically in this case, but it, it is important. It is very important because usually you, can, you know where your tracks are at or you can see the tracks in the mirror, you can't see the counterweight. If you have one lane of traffic shut off, um, you know you're safely within that lane and you go to swing, you know your counterweight's not going to be knocking mirrors off of passing cars, it's not going to be hitting people behind you because you know with where your track platform basically is sitting within that job. So you basically just stay in your own lane. Stay in your lane is the advice that comes out of this question. Correct. The way I see it. All right, well, I think we all know what happened. Rick, you've, you've won. You played nobly, Matt. It's great fun to have you both here. Rick, you're going to get a gift card with $300 on it for a shop Caterpillar. You're going to get one with 100 bucks on it because nobody goes home empty-handed. But, nice. you know, you really made a mess out of that first question. Now, I think we've got we to be honest. Um, sincere congratulations to you both for being nominated for Contractor of the Year. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, may the best man win. It's a, it, it's a great thing you're both doing. And I know everybody on this stage and here appreciates all the work you guys have done to, you know, make civilized life possible for the rest of us. So much obliged. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Thank guys. You. Titan of the Trades will be back maybe this afternoon at 2. You never really know anymore <laughs> after that last performance. I wouldn't blame them if they fired me. But if they, uh, if they didn't, I'll see you back here then. Till then, adios.